Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Stukas. I'm a professor of clinical pediatrics, a board certified allergist and immunologist, and I'm also a member of the Medical and Scientific Council for the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. There are many misconceptions in regards to allergic conditions and asthma and food allergies, and we're going to address several of those to try to help give good evidence-based information and combat the misinformation that's out there. What's the difference between a food allergy, intolerance, or sensitivity? It's really important to clarify distinctions between a food allergy and intolerance and a sensitivity. And when I see patients in the office, I always spend time just defining what these are because that really sets the stage for the role of testing, the need for elimination diets and management and prognosis. Food allergies are caused by the immune system. There's immediate types of allergies, which are caused by the immunoglobulin E antibody known as IgE. And this will cause rapid onset reproducible symptoms every time that food is eaten. So if you're concerned about say a milk allergy, then you really need, you should be having symptoms when you eat cheese, when you eat yogurt, ice cream, or drink milk. These symptoms can range in severity uh, as well as types of symptoms. We often will see combinations of big red itchy hives, swelling, rashes, itching, can produce vomiting, coughing, or anaphylaxis, which is a severe, rapidly progressive systemic allergic reaction that involves more than one part of the body. If you're eating a food and not experiencing those symptoms, it's very unlikely that you're allergic. There are more rare causes of delayed onset food allergy, one of which is called food protein-induced enterocolitis syndrome, and this causes uh, delayed onset profuse vomiting, like in the movie, The Exorcist. So this typically occurs in young infants between six and 12 months of age at first, and it can occur to a wide range of foods, including things like cow's milk or soy or rice, or even grains and vegetables. And the story typically goes, they eat the food, they're completely fine. Three hours later, they start to have profuse vomiting and sometimes diarrhea. This occurs in the absence of hives and swelling and anaphylaxis. There are no good diagnostic tests to diagnose that, but it's important to understand uh, that the clinical history should be reproducible every time that that food is eaten. Then we have non-allergic or non-immunologic uh, symptoms due to food intolerances. So this is not part of the immune system. This is difficulty with digestion. Food intolerances can come and go over time, or it may vary based upon the type of food you eat or the amount of food you eat. The most common example would be lactose intolerance, where people lack the ability to digest this simple sugar called lactose, which is present in dairy products. If you eat dairy products, it passes through undigested, causes a lot of discomfort, can cause bloating, diarrhea, gassiness, and things like that. There are no easy, available, commercial tests to diagnose food intolerance. So oftentimes we'll take a clinical history. If it suggests specific food intolerances, we'll recommend a two to four week strict elimination diet with careful observation whether the symptoms that were previously attributed to that food resolve or not. If the symptoms don't resolve, it probably wasn't that food. If the symptoms do resolve, we recommend eating that food again to see if the symptoms come back again. This is the best way to really figure out whether somebody has a true food intolerance. And then lastly, we have the term called food sensitivity. Well, unfortunately, there really is no consensus expert uh, criteria for how to diagnose a food sensitivity. Um, and unfortunately, if you spend any more than 30 seconds online, you'll see a lot of marketing behind food sensitivity tests and things like that. Well, oftentimes they attribute all kinds of vague symptoms that have nothing to do with ingestion of specific foods to having a quote unquote food sensitivity. And then they will sell very expensive at home food sensitivity test kits, which aren't validated and really don't indicate anything other than food you've eaten in the past. So when it comes to food sensitivity, you know, if you have concerns, please, please discuss with your personal doctor. Hopefully this clarifies some very important differences between food allergy, intolerance and sensitivity, but always discuss with your personal doctor if you have any concerns.